continuing with the topic of photosynthesis we had learned the three steps of photosynthesis but there are some important points you have to keep in mind that is does photosynthesis depend upon intensity of light yes it does depend upon more the intensity of light the photosynthetic activity will be more so if in the during the morning and evening hours the light intensity is less so the photosynthetic activity will also be less fine but what about in afternoon since you get lot of light intensity is very high there is more light intensity during afternoons so the photosynthetic activity will also be maximum indicating that maximum oxygen is released during the afternoons less oxygen is released during the morning and evening hours and what about night no photosynthesis so you don't have oxygen released out of the plant it's only the carbon dioxide which is released out of the plant fine okay now let us go into the next topic what is compensation point children you all know that inside the plant cell the two main organelles that is the chloroplast and representing only two organelles here chloroplast and mitochondria these are the semi autonomous organelles mitochondria is involved in cellular respiration you all know that and it is taking oxygen combining with glucose and releases carbon dioxide okay as a waste material clear in the case of chloroplast it takes carbon dioxide and in the presence of water it is making glucose this is photosynthesis fine so chloroplast is involved in photosynthesis mitochondria is involved in cellular respiration this is an anabolic reaction and this is called as a catabolic reaction clear now if you observe this carefully the chloroplast after photosynthesis it is releasing oxygen as a raw or as a waste product whereas in case of mitochondria as a result of cellular respiration which gas is released as a waste product it is the carbon dioxide don't you think inside the cell they are preparing the raw materials for each other the oxygen which is released out of the chloroplast can be utilized by the mitochondria for cellular respiration and the carbon dioxide released as a result of cellular respiration can be utilized for photosynthesis don't you think so yes it happens but this is not always like that because the, the uh, photosynthesis depend, depends upon the intensity of light to make it more clear let me give you one small example okay some situations we are going to just discuss for example during the morning hours i am dividing this that is this is happening in mitochondria fine let us consider it as two rooms two rooms okay one is a mitochondria room the other one is the chloroplast two rooms okay in mitochondria we know what happens is it is taking oxygen combining with glucose and releasing carbon dioxide in chloroplast what happens it is taking carbon dioxide and along with water it is making glucose and releasing oxygen so this is the waste product we are concentrating only on the waste product here clear now during the morning hours during morning hours the intensity of light is very less okay so mitochondria cellular respiration will occur all the time whether it is during the day or during the night for example suppose it is taking 10 oxygen 10 oxygen for respiration 
and releasing 10 carbon dioxide. Clear? Whereas here in chloroplast, here morning and during morning hours, it is also taking, it is taking 10 carbon dioxide and releasing 10 oxygen. Clear? This is happening in the cell. Now, during afternoon, when the intensity of the light is, intensity of light is maximum. Okay, and we know that when the intensity of light is maximum, photosynthesis is maximum. Instead of taking 10 carbon dioxide, it is it wants 100 carbon dioxide and it will release 100 oxygen molecules. But light intensity is not going to affect the cellular respiration in mitochondria. It is as usual, the respiration process is same at the same pace. That is, it will take 10 oxygen and release 10 carbon dioxide. Clear? Now, we, are, we were talking about the exchange. Yes, that has definitely can happen. Now, when it is 10 oxygen is taken and 10 carbon dioxide is released, this carbon dioxide can definitely be given to the other room for chloroplast so that it can photosynthesize. And this 10 oxygen can be given into the mitochondria for its respiration. But what happens during afternoons? It is, it is taking 10 oxygen and it is giving 10 carbon dioxide. 10 carbon dioxide will give to the chloroplast for photosynthesis. But is it sufficient for it? So what will the plants do? It will take 90 carbon dioxide from the environment. It is taking 90 carbon dioxide molecules from the environment. That is it is cleaning the air. And it is releasing 100 oxygen. Okay. And it's missing. We are giving 100 oxygen molecules. It will try to give to mitochondria. But the mitochondria will say no. You give me only only 10 oxygen. I will require only 10 oxygen. Out of that 100, 90 oxygen is released into the environment. Clear? So, during photosynthesis, especially during afternoons, if you are sitting under the tree during afternoons, you are going to get a lot of oxygen. Okay, because the intensity of light is high and so the photosynthetic rate is high and so you are getting a lot of oxygen out of it. Clear? So, in evening hours, again the same process will follow. That is morning and evening hours, the intensity of the light is less. So, the photosynthetic rate is also less. The photosynthetic rate is so less that it is equal to the rate of cellular respiration. So, compensation point means it's a point where there is no net exchange of gases with the environment. Because it is getting the raw material from the chloroplast. And the chloroplast is getting the raw material from the mitochondria. This happens during morning and evening hours when the intensity of the light is less. Okay. So, when the photosynthetic rate equals cellular respiration, then there is no net exchange of uh, uh, gases with the environment. So, this condition is called as the compensation point. Fine. Thank you.